even in college, when I was in college, I got my first record deal. And I could have quit college, moved to Nashville, made my album and, you know, just left. But I, I told my record company, you know, we're going to have to delay things for a year because I have to finish school. I want to get my degree. That was my thing I was proud of. I worked very hard for. So I delayed my music career because I wanted to get that education. So that's how important it is to me. But I just kind of, you know, started asking for donations and things like that, and people, fans and, and whatnot have donated and helped um, raise money for my AAA scholarships and academics, athletics, and artistic scholarships. So um, I have it offered for high school seniors and for anyone who's going to graduate school. So no matter what your age is, it's not it's not age dependent. As long as you're a native person who's um, going to, you know, a community college, vocational school, like you mentioned earlier, or even graduate school. I've had a couple of med students and uh, law students who have gotten uh, scholarships from me um, have won. So I'm really proud of it. I've had it for, oh, gosh, uh, since 2003, so right when, right when I first wow. started. Yeah, so it's been a while. But like you said, I can't handle it alone, so I started to work with, a community foundation um, in the North Carolina area uh, because I can't do it alone. It's just, it's, there's a lot of, you know, intricate financial legal things that I, I would prefer not to handle myself. And plus I've gotten some really great advice from a friend of mine. Do you know Noda Begay, the, the golfer, the, the na- native golfer? His name is Noda Begay. What was the name again? I don't Nota, think I know that. Noda Begay. He's, he's won some, um, he's, uh, Dene, he's Dene. Um, he's been, he's won a couple of pro golf um, tournaments. He's he's best friends with Tiger Woods. Like the, I don't, you've, okay. you've heard of him. I'm sure you have. Um, but he's on the golf channel. Anyway, he's he's got his own foundation with. Um, he does some things with Nike, but he's given me a lot of insight about how to run my foundation. And because his is like multi million dollar, he brings in tons of things for for the, you know for kids, native kids specifically, and um, more with, F, you know, athletics. So I'm, you know, I'm just trying to kind of get my team together because I really want to make mine really a lot bigger than it is now. But I'm grateful for the little bit that I can give every year. So. Wow. And I believe yeah. we have somebody else at the door. Um, so, um, well, they might have dropped. We had, we had somebody else at the door, and I think they dropped. But hopefully they'll call back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's what I think. Have you uh, had so far that have been able to uh, win these uh, grants and things of that nature? Say that one more time. I can't hear. I, I said, how many people have actually um, have you had since you had the foundation that have actually um, been able to uh, come in and actually uh, win these grants that you are off, that you are offering? Oh, okay, so I I think I have. Uh, let's see. So I have either 14 or 15, maybe about 15 different uh, students who have won scholarships. Um, so I offer them every year um, in the spring. And um, so, yeah, I think I've, I've got about 15, 15 or so students who have, have won scholarships. I want it to be bigger, so I've, I'm constantly trying to get the word out you know, to people, please apply um, because there's money to give. I don't have a lot, but I have something to help. It goes directly to the student, however they want to spend the money. Um, and, you know, because every little bit helps because, it's you know, things are oh, yeah. can be very tight. School's expensive, I understand. So any way I can help. Definitely. It looks like you're doing a great job of having folks help you yeah. out on a regular basis. So uh, that's always a great thing that uh, you're doing that. And, um, are there any special practices that you're working on other than the ones that we've mentioned, uh, Alyssa, that you want to share other than the ones with the uh, studio and the one with, of course, your school and everything and teaching? But are there any other things that you've got going on on your plate that you want to share with our listeners? Um, well, I wrote a book uh, last May in, um, called Earth Consciousness and Cultural Revelation. And a uh, book, I basically told the story about how I kind of tracked down my 
big family roots in North Carolina. Um, just based on a couple of little threads of a story that my grandparents left, able to come down here and, and kind of tap into the history and culture here and reconnect and all these different ex- amazing experiences that took place in relation to my creative process, different, I don't know, all kinds of things, stories people told me, people I met, dreams and visions I had, and um, and then uh, many, many artworks in the book, but a lot of writing, a whole lot of writing, which uh, it kind of took me away from my art, but brought me closer to my art at the same time, just all, all that oh, yeah. sitting down and, you know... Yeah, writing a book and is what was, a pretty big endeavor. <laughs> yep, definitely. Oh, hold on one second. I think we got the other caller on as well. Um, who else do we have on the line? Uh, I have an 818 number. Yeah, this is PJ Vegas. How you guys doing? Hey, PJ Vegas. I'm glad that you gave me a call. PJ Vegas is a uh, native performer out of the West Coast. So, uh, And I understand you just won a um, one of the NAMI Awards. So um, right now I've got um, Jana. Jana um, is, of course, a longtime uh, performer in the uh, community, and Alyssa Hinton, who is a uh, artist and educator. But, uh, PJ, tell us what it was like winning that award. And uh, you've also worked with some major people. I, I looked at your bio. I saw that you was actually – done some performances with the um I believe it was with the uh roots or somebody along those lines. Yeah, uh so man, it was really a, just an honor to be nominated amongst my peers in uh Indian country at the Native American Music Awards. There's so many great artists and um especially for the type of song that I wrote, it was a song called Tears that's on Spotify right now. You can, you can check it out. It's uh talking about the missing and murdered indigenous women. Um that is a constant, you know, problem in our communities and um, I submitted it to the Native American Music Awards and it won for best independent single. So um, wow. it was an honor wow. to be able to, yeah, it was an honor to be able to speak on that, to speak about that, and use that platform, and then also to, you know, win the award was just crazy. I was really lucky for that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the people I've worked with, um, I'm part of a group called Mag Seven that uh, Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas um, put together. Um, it's a collective of Native artists from all over that uh, are coming together to make songs that speak on issues in Indian country and try to use a, big, like a bigger platform to bring awareness. So it's uh, it's been really cool, man. I've just really been honored to work with such great people. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, what has it been like? That's part of what we've been talking to uh, Jana and Alyssa about is just how too often the Native uh, community isn't recognized by the bigger music community, but it sounds like y'all are trying to challenge that by putting together this group that's actually going to uh, look at ways to get more folks to recognize the rich tradition that exists in the Native uh, music community. Because we know that it covers all kinds of genres, everything from rap and hip-hop to R&B to, of course, the traditional sound. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Taboo was very instrumental in um, bringing us to the forefront as far as, you know, bringing um, activism through music because, you know, his platform is enormous. So, um, you know, him using his platform and then us using the platforms that we've created over the years, it just amplifies our voices and really just brings more people to take part in, you know, in, a, in a subject that's kind of being overlooked by mainstream media. So, um you know, we just felt that, you know, more than one voice all coming together for one collective, you know, topic um, would be a greater way to reach the masses. And it's been working. So we're thankful for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But great way well, to get the message out to that nature. Um, oh, just out of curiosity, um, we t- talked earlier today. We know that in three days it's going to be Thanksgiving and everybody else is pretty much not going to celebrate the traditional way because a lot of folks feel it is the day of mourning. So I was wondering how your family is handling the uh, supposed holiday that's coming up in three days and what y'all will be doing, if anything, or how you will handle this uh, holiday that, like I said, for a lot is a day of mourning. It's not a day to be celebrated. Yeah, definitely. Uh, You know, we'll say some prayers. We'll light some smoke up for the people, some sage. We'll um, we'll just carry on, you know. It's another day, another day of – working, but also mourning for the people whose lives were lost, the first contact. Uh, so, yeah, we don't really celebrate it. We're not going to really, you know, do any type of big thing for it. We never really have. We just, it's more so a day that we all get together and, uh, and just, you know, you know, just be with family on that day. You know what I mean? So, it's not yeah, good. Well, yeah, we got, 
Vegas, I wanted to say hello because I, I this is Jenna. Hey, DJ Vegas, I'm I'm Jenna Michelle. I'm going to say hi first of all. <laughs> hi, Jenna. How are and, you? And how are you? Hi, congratulations on your NAMI. Um, I'm actually um, Donald and Donald Kelly and Ellen Bello are dear friends of mine, and so there's a awesome. Oh awesome yeah, they're great. Group of yeah, so really honored that you were able to to experience that. Um, the NAMIs, I love love the NAMI, So congratulations. Um, but I, I did so want much. to say I have to sound off, um, Mark. I do have to sound off because I have another interview, but I wanted to say thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course. Um, oh, no. Alyssa, uh, yeah. yeah. It was great having yeah. you on, Janet, and definitely we'll have to have you back on at another time because I'm always uh, glad to hear your voice and to talk to you, So, and I'll be definitely keeping in touch with you in other ways. If folks wanted to reach out to you, Jana, um, what's the best way for them to reach out to you if they uh, want to reach out to you and have further communication with you? Yeah. Yeah, they can just check out my Facebook, my Instagram and social, uh, and my um, uh, Twitter, and it's all under Jana Michonne on my website, J-A-N-A Michonne, M-A-S-H-O-N-E-E. So it's under that name. Um, but, yeah, they can just reach out. But I really appreciate the support. It was awesome talking to Alyssa as well. Go, girl. <laughs> yeah, I hope to see you. I hope to bump into you again. Sometime. I know. Let's let's bump in together. But yeah, uh, so this is awesome. I'd love to do this again and maybe get talk to Vegas a little bit more um, on a future level. But you really respect what you're doing too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, my Definitely. Yeah. As well is uh, uh, my Instagram as well is the real PJ Vegas and my Facebook is just PJ Vegas all caps. So yeah, reach out and let's talk. Let's see what we can oh, do. Oh cool, awesome. I will. I'm gonna connect with you for sure. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, thank night. you so much, Mark. Uh, when they raise, thank no you problem. so much, everyone. I'm going to sound off. Yep. Definitely glad to have you All on, right. and I uh, look forward to having you more conversation with you in the near future. So, uh, um, thank you. PJ Vegas, you said that part of what you were doing was uh, the salute uh, to the women that are of the Native heritage. So, tell us how that came about. Cause like I said, a lot of times we ignore, as we talked about earlier today, and we've had two women on, uh, definitely Alyssa as well as um, Jana, and uh, they talked about just the way that the history has corrupted the Native uh, view and everything. But a lot of that is also the way that the women have been portrayed. So I was wondering how this project came about and uh, what kind of uh, stereotypes are you trying to fight off? Yeah, definitely. So um, in our communities every year, there's hundreds, even thousands of women that go missing and are murdered, and a high percentage of those women are indigenous. So this is something that's being overlooked by mainstream media pretty much on all platforms. So, you know, it's pretty scary the fact that there's people being murdered and being killed, women at that, you know, the creators of life, and that it's not even being spoken about on the news or anything like that. So, um, as an activist in music and, a, and, and as a person who has five sisters of my own, I feel like it was my obligation to speak on this subject because, you know, we, it never really affects anyone until it does. You know what I mean? So, it's just better to be aware of it before your family or any or yourself or anyone becomes victim of someone like that. So um, the song Tears um, was written um, at a time where in me and my family, we were actually going through uh, that, you know, it's kind of a hard subject to speak on, but one of my cousins was actually murdered um, and she was an indigenous woman and her case was being overlooked by the local authority and, wasn't even a priority on their list until me and my family rose up and protested in front of the police station. We protested in front of the news station to bring awareness to her murder. And after months and months of protests by our family, they finally looked into it and caught the guy that did it. So it just really, wow. really struck. Uh, yeah, me too. It just struck a, a core with me. And I felt like after that, you know, Everyone else deals, you know, is dealing with it in their own way, but I had to write a song about it. So um, the song Tears speaks on that issue, and I wrote it for my cousin in memory of her. Um, and it was actually crazy because the, on the anniversary of her passing was the day that I was at the Native American Music Awards, and the song that I wrote for her won. Wow. And uh, it's definitely a top, top, it's definitely a topic that even has deep roots here. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely a topic that has deep roots here in North Carolina because, as uh, many people know, yeah, he was actually so. a um, 
he was actually a um, 